Hi, my name is Dr Julie Barker, I'm a GP in Newark and the purpose of this video is to help you acclimatise to using our cancer care review template on System 1 so that you and the patient can get the best out of the time together. So why should we make an effort with the Cancer Care Review. Apart from the COF incentive, um, you may wonder why we should spend time here when patients have maybe been spending time in hospital. There are several reasons for this. Patients look to and appreciate their GP team getting involved at this time to support them through their cancer journey. Primary care teams are well placed to use this teachable moment to encourage patients to think about rehabilitation and even prehabilitation, that is maximising their health and including making lifestyle changes prior to having any cancer treatment. There is strong evidence that this increases the treatment options available to the patient, improves resilience for the treatments and improves outcomes, including reducing relapse following treatment. This slide shows the use of different parts of the health service by the general population and cancer survivors. You'll see from this that use of primary care emergency services and specialist doctors are all significantly higher than the general population. The relative disability experienced by patients is also a lot higher and this is where we're well placed to help the patient intervene to improve quality of life. Our patients often are experiencing comorbidities as well as their cancer. So we often see them anyway. We may not, however, recognise that part of their presentation may be linked to their previous cancer diagnosis. In a Macmillan study, 49% of cancer survivors had at least one other chronic condition. So we're likely to be seeing these patients at least annually and not necessarily with cancer at the forefront of our minds. One in three patients report five moderate to severe unmet needs at the end of treatment and for 60% this had not improved in the six months after treatment. These kind of feelings that have been expressed by patients often don't come out in a standard hospital outpatient appointment. This is the trajectory of Mary's treatment following diagnosis. You'll see that after she's had her surgery and radiotherapy, possibly to have chemotherapy afterwards, there is a time where she's feeling quite on her own and nothing's happening. And this is often the time that the Cancer Care Review is particularly useful. The time of worry and uncertainty can be addressed during this time. This is an example of some of the new treatment summaries that are now coming out of hospital outpatients at the end of treatment. You may have seen one already from your local hospital. Certainly locally in Nottinghamshire, the breast teams are using these routinely and other tumour sites are now coming online. There will be actions for GPs. You'll see in the middle of this page there's some things that are particularly highlighted for us to be aware of and we can use this information within our cancer care review. This is an example of a patient prompt that we can also use and it enables the patient and their families to have a think about what their needs are. This is especially useful if the patient hasn't had a chance to think about their own personal needs separate to particular treatments. They may not have yet have had a holistic needs assessment which would help them understand 
what the cancer care review is for. The patient prompt helps guide their thinking and prepare for their cancer care review. You'll see that it encourages the patient to think about how they could get the best quality out of life and to make a note of any questions that they would like answered. So when the patient comes for their review, we have a prepared patient and if you've had the right information from the hospital, we also have a prepared doctor. The final page in the prompt sheet has an action plan which can be completed at the end of the cancer care review appointment. There is a resources page at the end of it which the patient and their family may well find very useful and it's got all the local cancer related information and self-care support listed. We have either sent this document out to the patient with their appointment or we've telephoned the patient to book the appointment and they've been able to collect the document from reception and complete it prior to the appointment. So this is our demonstration patient who's coming in for a cancer care review following completion of his initial treatment. We can see from the screen here that he's still a smoker, that on his major active problem list um, he's already been seen regularly with his diabetes and ischemic heart disease and our admin staff have already coded his cancer and the treatments that he's had. We have also received a treatment summary for him and it's now nearly six months since his initial diagnosis. Our cancer care review template has been added onto our patient stem under the COF templates. So we've actually replaced our COF cancer care review template with a new one. So we're going to bring this up now and you'll see that we've got four pages it's been designed with a view to trying to follow um, what our normal conversation would be like. We've had to take out the pretty pictures, unfortunately, which has changed the formatting. Um, so it's not quite as pretty as it was. But um, you'll see that we've got an initial bit just prompting you to review any documentation already received. The patient prompt document is linked on here so you will be able to bring that up if you hadn't already got it saved. So this is bringing up the document that uh, we looked at earlier um, so if the patient hasn't received one you do have the option of completing it direct from the template and then printing it out. So let's go back to the patient's so and the template now. Um, we've deliberately not prompted a recoding of the patient's cancer to avoid duplication, assuming that practices will have already coded the patient. However, we do have a text box here to record any relevant things in connection to what the patient's understanding of their condition is. There's some prompts about the treatment and any side effects associated with this, again with some free text box to record any relevant comments. The second page focuses on rehabilitation and self-care. Patients are often ignorant about the huge difference exercise makes to recovery and even a lung cancer patient such as ours will have much better outcomes if they stop smoking. A key part of our role in the cancer care review is to encourage and assist patients maximise their health and recovery by lifestyle advice. There is a huge amount of information about this in the Macmillan resources online for both patients and clinicians. 
these menu drop downs will automatically code quaff codes to the patient record for any interventions undertaken. You will notice at the bottom of this page we've included finance and work related prompts. These are both key areas of concern for patients that are not addressed well by hospital teams, although work is afoot to improve this. The financial burden after a cancer diagnosis is often considerable. Patients can now be invited to health and wellbeing events as part of their cancer treatment education and support, and this can be coded here. These have now started taking place across Nottinghamshire with a plan for a rolling programme to include self-care advice, support services, resources and tumour-specific information. So far, early patient feedback has been very good. Patients can be signposted to the Macmillan Helpline for support in these areas or to other welfare rights services. On the third page, you'll see we've got an area here where we can record someone's performance status. Recording the patient's performance status is valuable for several reasons. It gives a reflection of the effect of treatments and rehabilitation, for better or worse, and over a time, worsening score may help with recognising deterioration and a shortened prognosis. This may well guide your discussions with the patient about whether they wish to have more treatment or suspend any treatment that they're on if their performance status is worsening. An improving performance status can be really encouraging for patients to know during their rehabilitation and the grading can be coded to the patient record. There's a section here on carers, details and you'll see here the all-important cancer care review which will then code for quaff. On the final page there are a selection of useful links for the whole of Nottinghamshire and you'll see at the bottom there's a link to our end-of-life template. Inevitably some patients will present in a palliative phase and this will link to our EPAX template so that advanced care planning can be commenced as part of the cancer care review where necessary. Having completed the template it can be printed off once saved. You need to remember to code it. Everything that we've recorded will be recorded onto the patient record and it can be printed off and given to the patient to take away with them. With regard to recall, what we've started doing in our surgery now is using our established recall and this patient should already have one with regard to their diabetes but we would include all their key diagnoses including cancer so that when we see them for their chronic disease review, it will be evident that they've had cancer treatment, so this can be taken into account. Because we have recorded as an active problem both their cancer and the treatments that they've had, chest-related late effects can be linked to their previous radiotherapy without having to refer patients for possibly unnecessary extra tests. It's important that we keep key treatments such as radiotherapy, chemotherapy and the newer biological treatments in our minds for subsequent years when patients may present with late effects that we need to take into account. Finally, thank you for watching this and we hope that your cancer care reviews become a more enjoyable and helpful consultation for both your patient and your practice healthcare professionals. This has been a collaboration with four of my Macmillan GP colleagues across Nottinghamshire, part of our Macmillan partnership.